Nurbanu Somji from Dar es Salaam in Tanzania has become the first person on the African continent outside of South Africa to have undergone a successful and life-saving operation in which a hardware ventricular assist device or HVAD was implanted to enable her critically damaged heart to continue functioning. One evening, eminent Cape Town cardiothoracic surgeon Dr. Vili Kun, who practices at Netke Christian Barnard Memorial Hospital, received a phone call from Mrs. Somji's children in Tanzania. She needed a heart transplant or an artificial heart, and um, they heard that this technology is available in South Africa, and then they called us and they got hold of my number and they phoned. And uh, we said, well, uh, come down for the assessment and then we'll take it from there. And when she came down, she was a very good candidate to have this procedure. South Africa has a great tradition of innovation and leadership in the discipline of cardiac medicine, going back to Professor Christian Barnard's first open heart transplant in 1969. Cardiology and cardiothoracic surgery for South Africa has always been in the forefront and you'd be amazed to know how many firsts we actually do in South Africa. And clearly, uh, Dr. Kuhn, with his vast experience, it was just a natural fit that he would evolve to the hardware uh, ventricular-assisted uh, devices. Mrs. Somji is a cancer survivor, but the chemotherapy she had eight years ago damaged her heart. This life-saving heart assist device was her only hope of survival. My heart was not working, it was damaged. So we got a very good address of Dr. Kuhn from our cardiologist. And we came here and the surgery was done and it's really done nicely and everything is going good. Yeah. The HVAD is a mechanical heart, explains Dr. Vili Kuhn a founding member of the Pan-African Society of Cardiothoracic Surgeons. Dr. Kuhn has worked with the German Heart Institute's Professor Charles Abraham Yanka in a collaborative effort to benefit African patients. Professor Yanka has pioneered the use of mechanical heart devices internationally. It's still, it's still a heart transplant, whether it's a biological heart transplant or a mechanical heart transplant. So you should still be a transplant candidate before you can get either or. A limiting factor for transplant patients is always time. Waiting periods for organ donor hearts can be anything from six months to a year. But these patients are too sick to wait and she was definitely way too sick to wait anyway for our transplant. So her only option was a mechanical heart. The HVAD is implanted during open heart surgery and helps to restore normal blood flow by enabling the left ventricle of the heart to operate properly. It supports mainly the left side of the heart. It's an implantable device. It's a little bit bigger than a golf ball. And you implant it like a heart transplant. It stays on the inside. And the patient is unaware of it. Do you see this thing here? Except for the external battery pack that has to be worn in a bag on the patient's hip. But the advantage is that you don't, you're not on all that medication. So you're on very little medication. You're not on all that transplant medication, anti-rejection medication. Patients therefore don't suffer the clinical side effects of expensive transplant medication. And follow-up visits and aftercare are a great deal easier. So it is, from that perspective, a much better option. The downside is that you have to carry the batteries. But Dr. Kun says the battery packs are getting smaller all the time. He believes that with the development of battery technology, the entire HVAD system will be able to be implanted safely in the patient in the not too distant future. He says these devices can already last up to 10 years and within the next decade will be even more efficient. If they can develop a totally implantable battery system, then it will reduce the number of heart transplants significantly. We won't have to wait anymore for all the donor hearts. Then we will see very little heart transplants being performed. In fact, in Europe and the United States, 
HVAC procedures are now done twice as often as heart transplants using organ donors. He's gone through this process. Do yeah. you want to do or do you want him to do first? I'll try. Jacques Duplessis, Managing Director of the Netcare Hospital Division, says for him the most rewarding aspect of these procedures is to see the reaction of the patient's family. Okay. Hey. Hey. Well done. To see the relief that a loved one, and maybe it's only a quality of life improvement or a life expectation is increased by a further five or ten years. I think for me, always the best is to see the family's gratitude and of course the patient's gratitude. Critical care nurse Janelle Louis is excited to be part of the groundbreaking outreach program into Africa. She's accompanying Mrs. Somji to assist with her care during recovery and train doctors and nurses in Tanzania in the follow-up care needed. Well, something new, so I'm diving in with both feet. <laughs> to impart this knowledge on, to others from what I've learned, I think it's, it's, it's good. The amazing advances of modern technology mean the device can be monitored remotely from Cape Town via telemedicine to Tanzania. Sister Janelle will teach staff there how to download the logs onto a memory stick. And that gets an email to us once a month. And from here we will analyze it. If we feel that we need more information, we will then from here email it through to Germany or America and then they will analyze it for and help us there. So it becomes a small world at the moment. Dr. Kun remembers how weak and tired Mrs. Somji was when they first met. She was very weak. She was in a wheelchair. She couldn't walk. She was already been in a wheelchair for two months and she couldn't even talk full sentences. She was getting tired just by speaking. But after the HVAD procedure, which took place at Netcare Christian Barnard Memorial Hospital, Mrs. Somji was like a different person. She was walking 30 minutes per, uh, three times a day on the beach. So it was a completely different situation. Yeah. So that is a great news. Jacques Duplessis says this kind of breakthrough procedure counters the misperceptions which many people hold about medicine in Africa. And I think that for me is the beauty that we all Africans and we actually can share our knowledge and intellect with the rest of Africa and actually be a continent uh, to be reckoned with and uh, on par uh, with the likes of the first worlds, America and Europe. Of course, I'm really looking forward to go home and of course, and to tell my people and everybody, my friends, that there is a new technology in South Africa if anybody needs help or anything.